And what I love about this verse, and I don't want you to miss this. In John chapter 1, 1 through 4, it was written in such a way that there could be no doubt. He says that he was from the beginning, which means what? Before all time. And then he says he was not only with God, but he was God. And I've showed them this verse, and they're like, I know this. And they'll say things like, but he was a God. Which is kind of interesting, because what they're actually saying is that he was God-like. But that he was created. And so John, kind of knowing that people might even go this way, uh, he says that Jesus created all things. And I've actually had discussions where they would say, yes, that he created all things, but not himself. But John says, okay, I know that's where you were going to go. So I'm going to say this. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Are you getting this? Nothing was made that has been made. Therefore, Christ could not have been made. In him was life. Nothing living existed before him. Now, I know we think of the Father this way. But sometimes we struggle to think of of the Son and the Holy Spirit this way. And the truth is, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been from ever, eternity, will never understand it. And they were present at creation, as you will see in the next few weeks. In the great chapter on faith... There's this verse that the author of Hebrews says. He says this. He says, by faith, we understand that the universe was, catch this, formed at God's command. Did you catch that? And so if you would think about what we've been talking about, who is he talking about? Jesus. Yes, By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In other words, God is the only one who can make something out of nothing. You know, he's given us the privilege of procreation. He's given us the privilege to take clay and turn it into something kind of cool. He's given my wife Nancy the ability to to paint and to create things amazingly. But there's always something that she has to use to make it happen. But God is the only one, the only one that can create something out of nothing. Are you following me? Do you believe... uh, That when God speaks, when God commands, it happens. I mean, we read in Genesis over and over again, and God said, and then something was created. And God said, and then something else was created. And God said, and then something else. Before he spoke, it was not. After he spoke, it was. Now, do you believe that God, when God speaks, when it commands, it happens? Do you believe that when God speaks, when he commands, it happens in our lives? Do you? You remember the Roman centurion that came to Jesus and said, I have a servant that's dying? Remember that story in the Gospels? And Jesus, who was, had no prejudice at all, he didn't care that it was a Roman centurion, he knew, by the way, one day would probably be part of crucifying him. He, he, he looks at this man and he says, come on, let's go and, 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 and heal your servant. And do you remember what the centurion says? I am not worthy to have you in my house, but speak only 
the word. Remember that? And my servant will be healed. Speak only the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus says, there was nobody in Israel that had as much faith as the centurion. And so it was throughout the gospel narratives. He's healing the sick, stilling the tempest, cleaning the, cleansing the lepers, for, for, uh, forgiving sins, raising the dead, all by what? Speaking it. He spoke and it was. And so I, I guess what I want to kind of convey this morning or ask this morning is what do you need God to speak to your life today? Is there some sin that you need victory over? God can speak victory in your life. Is there some tempest in your life that needs to be stilled? God can speak peace and tranquility into your life. Is there a relationship that needs mending? God can speak restoration to that relationship. Are you brokenhearted? God can speak healing to your heart. Are you confused? God can speak truth to you. And you say, well, how? And here's what I would tell you. This is just what I would do. This is what I did when I struggled with really believing it. I mean, we, we get it here, but we struggle with getting it here. So here's what I did. I said, God, please put in me a desire to truly ask you to speak that in my life. And then put in me a belief to truly believe it because I cannot do it on my own. Do you get that? I'm not asking you to say, you know, God, just speak it. No, no. I actually ask God to put in me that desire. Put in me the belief. For it is God who works in us both to will and to do. Amen? In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. That's how that, those, those four verses end. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. Now, I know I've spoken about her before. This is our dog, Lucy. And I will be honest with you. Nancy and I have had a couple of rough days here. Uh, Thursday, I came home uh, from uh, some of my meetings, and I was actually later than I normally would get in time to give her dinner or Nancy. Nancy was gone, too. So we, I, she was all like, let's go. Give me some dinner, man. I'm ready. I'm hungry, you know? So I gave her some dinner and uh, went into my office to work on this talk. Right about that time, Nancy came home. And I hear her calling me saying, hey, Serge, come out here. Something's wrong with Lucy. So went out there, and she was outside uh, trembling. And you could just tell she just didn't look right. And I'm like, what just happened? She was doing fine. And again, we did not know. And so we said, Lucy. And her ears perked up. And we said, come inside. Again, had no clue the pain that she was experiencing. But because we commanded it, she came in. And so then we tried to comfort her. We tried to figure out. I got online. You know, so you can find anything on Google, right? What's, what's wrong with my dog? <laughs> and of course, everything said, take her to the vet. 
So we called our, uh, we called the uh, urgent care 24 seven, went there Thursday night, helped her into the car. I mean, it was just sad to see her just totally. And then, uh, uh, after some x-rays and some sonograms, the doctor came in and said, showed us the x-rays, showed us the syringe with blood and something in it. And he goes, you know, never seen this before, but it looks like she has some tumors and, and her stomach is all swollen and there's nothing really we can do. I mean, I mean, we could probably try to go in, but she might just die on the table anyway. And so Nancy and I made a very difficult decision. I promised myself I could make it through this. The very, and, and I know that you have been through this, some of you. The very difficult decision of uh, putting Lucy to sleep. And um, there are times when I will walk in through my door and almost slip and say, hey, Lucy, because if I, I knew if I did, when, when she was with us, she'd come right by, you know. Now, here's what I know. I know one day, God will speak our name or the name of, of our loved ones that, that, have, that have gone. And just by speaking their name, that is, the power in his words, like when he said, Lazarus, come forth. He'll say, Sergio, come forth. Those, those, the creator will recreate us anew. And he will speak life again in our lives. Do you believe it? And when he speaks my name, I will answer. Will you? Will you, when he speaks your name, 